Perfect. So my name is Jasmine Knighton. I'm one of the optimizers here at Vine Skills, helping folks get launched into FileVine as well as FBDA. I worked at uh, FileVine for about a year and a half before coming over to Vine Skills. Super excited to be bringing you all free help every Wednesday um, and just bringing the wealth of knowledge that Vine Skills has to offer um, here to you all in this manner. And my name is Eric Kaufman. I'm a Georgia Bard attorney uh, turned into now working with Vine Skills and going through and um, helping take care of everything that is filed. Uh, little background, I was a finance attorney specializing in uh, subrogation issues uh, for a personal injury law firm. And then I moved over to, to compliance and write, write the rule book A to Z, how do we handle um, client cases in there. And then uh, when we launched with FileVine, I ended up taking that first seat to let's go through and get it to work how we need it to work with our processes and procedures. Um, and actually that led me to really enjoying working with fusions and reporting and all of the stuff in FileVine. Um, and so, I mean, that's really where I've learned all of the all of my fusion stuff is just a lot of practice, and a lot of trial and error. Um, so cool. We can go through and we can hop in. Awesome. If you all have any kind of questions, feel free to use the Q&A feature. Um, we'll get those answered for you in real time. Sorry, Derek. Oh, no, you're good to go. That's important. <laughs> so just a couple things. Um, we're going to go through and we'll, we'll look at a fusion today on how we can create essentially a report firm wide that's going to allow us to go through and pull information from a, um, multiple different sections. Uh, I know. You know, I've talked in the past too on how the basics for fusion. This one's a little bit more, a little bit more advanced, but very popular just in general. I might find a lot of law firms that they want to be able to do this. So hopefully, I'm really hopeful that this goes through and helps out today. Uh, we'll start start talking about the very very basics, and the first thing is running your reports. So here, I only have my two reports. I have a static report which I put in first in case I want to do a word fusion later on. This will be Excel today. Uh, and then I've only I've only included the one insurance section because I think this will take up all of our time to be able to go through and do. However, you can go through and I can add to this. I can add a bunch of things to medicals. Um, I can add liens, all of my other collection sections. I can put in there as well. So I have my two reports added. These are the report numbers, which we will need to know for when we're making the fusion. And then... I'll just start by generating a default template. I did go through already and I, I created a, I, since I created the fusion and saved my reports there, you have to do that first. And then you can go through and create your, uh, your widget. Um, let me see a Q and A. All pro the projects that are associated with a contact card. So potentially, I will say for that one, uh, for answering this question, Tracy, that you should be able to go through and do um, a list of projects. And then you can find that contact card and then put that person's name in there in your criteria. Um, so like for me, if I want to see all the projects that I'm the, the attorney for, I'm going to go through and I'm going to say uh, find or find this field and then the name is going to contain Derek Hoffman. And that'll pull it. And you can use those things too as well as you're going through um, when you're building these reports because all the criteria that you build into these reports will also apply to your fusion overall, uh, which is nice and handy. Uh, so I have my button here. And um, hey, Paul, this is just a, uh, the the report dashboard. This is just a section that, we went through and that we have made in there. Um, I think if you do have this from us, uh, you could probably go to manage sections and be able to find it. Or if not, we can totally get those added in too. So I'll go through, I have my template generated and I will open it up and don't need to recover all my workbooks because I don't know what's all in there probably. Um, probably a mess of sorts. So you can see for each of my reports, both my static and my insurance, I have two different pages. They just look like standard templates 
that you would go through and use um, after you create a report when you customize those in the background. And so I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna start at. I'm gonna make this my main page, name it whatever, and then I'm gonna go through and call this one my helper insurance. And this is really just for me to be able to know exactly what I'm looking for because otherwise the long titles, uh, they get messy and hard to see. I'll, um, I also do recommend naming your reports in a systematic way, kind of like this. I know this means fusion, free help, and then static is my first one. Um, so I generally name all of my stuff like that just to help myself. Uh, and then later on, if someone's gonna go through and take over those uh, that report fusion and that management, they know as well. And a rule- but We'll go through. Oh, sorry. I was oh. just gonna say a rule that you taught me is to put your static section report first in that list. Um, and then that naming convention will also help you remember which of your uh, reports is static versus collection. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it really, naming is, if you make these names too long, you will not be able to see them on Excel. Uh, it'll go through, it'll just say, if you keep it as like list of collection item or, you know, list of insurance items, and then put something on, on it, you will just see list of insurance and then it will just cut off. Uh, chances are we'll not be doing it the way that you need to be doing it. So, oh, computer issue. Let me go through and pull up. This is the kind of the template that we're going to go through and be building. Um, it's going to have a bunch of information in there, uh, specifically pertaining to our ins uh, the insurance data. A couple of main points when you're going through and creating a fusion like this. You want to make sure that you pull in the file by URL. When you create a collection section report, they're not going to, you're not going to be able to go through and uh, use a project ID. It's just not a reportable field. If you use project numbers throughout your projects, then you'd be okay there. But I generally just trust the file by URL because it's 100% going to be unique. So kind of just starting off. Here, I'm going to go through and start thinking about what I want my report to look like. I want to have generally file by URL, the name, incident date, create date. I want the incident type. Uh, let me go through and just slide this over so I keep my formatting. And we'll just do a couple other things. We'll do uh, 3P insurance. And we'll do 3P adjuster. Oops. And then the 3P policy limits. And I'll just copy these over here. Because I believe I'm just, yeah, doing it all for um, 1P, UM, UIM. Cool. So first off with this, uh, I do have my new columns in there. I can't just add these fields, like just copy and paste them over. Uh, if I try to, Filevine will say that it, there's an error. Um, I'm also, I'm not able to go through and just copy one over. Otherwise, it will say, hey, this is not in this report. So I'm going to move my end repeat note. And this is how the fusions really work, is they have these start and end repeats. And I want mine to, I'm going to put it one to the side. It doesn't necessarily, you need to have it at the very end generally, but it doesn't really matter too, too much. And this is, you can see on our start note, each, this one has our report name. So the report names are important because um, it'll have begin repeat, report name, and then report ID. Um, same for each of these. So what I want to do is I essentially want to generate two pages, but I want all of this information to just appear on one. So two reports and appear on one. So I come over here to my main, I have my, all of my stuff out. I want my 3P insurance, adjuster, policy limits, and then do that for each side. So I can start using some different formulas over here to really start building that out. So I'll pop in one right here and I'll make it yellow because I'm going to use this as a helper cell. Uh, and generally, I just use the word helper a lot. I want helper, name, claim number, and status. 
because I'm going to pull in the liability status as well. And I kind of want this all to appear like stacked information. I want to have um, my insurance company full or full name and then have their claim number on it and then the status render it. So I can go through and generate this report for someone else to see and then they can have all of that information in one nice little cell. Uh, it doesn't have to go through and you don't have to flip through pages. Um, so that's our ultimate goal here. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use concatenate. And essentially, this just takes multiple texts and put the text and puts them together. Um, so I want my first name. And then if you want to go through and make it so that it appears on another line, what you're going to do is use char 10. And this will put it on the next line. Or you'll, and basically, it's like hitting return uh, while you're typing something in Word. So I want my name, and then I want my claim number. And I'm just going to click right there, put a comma, char 10. And then come through here. And my last one was status. So I'll put that there. Cool. Expanding this, you can now see, hey, these all just appear one on top of another. Um, you can also do just so you know other things. You can join other text um, that you type in manually. So I could go through and I could put quotations and type in something else. And then it will go through and it will put that text in there too. So you can really customize it how you need to, um, especially if you have line break or like lines that need to be added to these individual cells um, or symbols, you can do that as well, or just even labels too. So we have this here. I don't, now I'll just, I'll grab the adjuster info. So the helper adjuster, and I'm keeping these another color too, so I don't get confused later on. Um, Cause that has definitely happened to me before, uh, especially when we start getting down to like, if we have a very long report and we're on, you know, C, C, A, uh, to C, B, to, you know, all the way down there. So we'll put, we'll do the same sort of thing here. We'll just do another concatenate formula. And I want to go through and pull in our adjuster full name. And then I want a space of chart 10. Come through here and I want to be able to go through and contact that adjuster from this page. So put that in and another char 10 and then adjust your email. Awesome. So there we go. Both of those are pulling in and now I can, I can use those and using VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP, I can pull that information into my other page, which is very nice. So let's see here. I also want to, I have two. So in our template that I'm using here, um, we have multiple policy limits. So we could have our liability policy limits and our 1P policy limits. And we have it built like that. So in your vitals, you can see the total of all of your liability policy uh, limits and all of your first party as well. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to put these together as well, make these a currency. And then I'll do the same thing with my concatenate. I do use this a lot for a lot of my fusions now char 10, and then my other one, and close it off. Cool. So with this right here, we probably have a good spot to start in. Um, I'm going to keep this helper insurance. I'm going to keep this visible for the time being. And we're going to come over here and just start making some, some more adjustments on it. So let's see here. I want also my... I want my date to appear under the name of the project, the create date, uh, our initial contact date. So I'm gonna go through and I'll do that as well. Um, and then we can look at how do you do dates with this too. So this is gonna be my new name column. And I wanna do another concatenate. And I wanna pull in this name. And then if I click this, if I were to generate it, what would happen is I'm going to get that timestamp that you'll see sometimes when you're running these reports. And we don't really, we don't want that. Um, so what I'm actually going to go through and do is I'm going to have a create date. We'll call it, um, let's see here. Yep, create. I can't spell now. Wow. Create date. And then this one is going to be our helper. Cool. 
Well, actually, I don't have to. This will just be the regular create date. Yeah. Here, what I'm going to do to make this work is I'm going to go through and turn this into text. Uh, I do this with dates a lot. Uh, and when I use these again, concatenate formulas and a lot of formulas too, unless it has to be read as a date, I just go through and I make it text. So I have my value and then I want to, I want it to be, um, month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. Cool. I can come right click this and I can hide it now. Um, so you do see a difference right there, but, uh, it's out of the way completely. Oh, and I need to add a, uh, I want to put a chart 10 in there just to make it look nicer as well. Let's give this some, get this to be a little bit more wide and just do my general formatting. Okay, so we have all this information in. Now I want to be able to go through and I want to have my 3P insurance in there. So I'm going to use XLOOKUP. Uh, I believe it depends on which type of office you have. I think. VLOOKUP is there for older versions. I generally use XLOOKUP. It, I seem to have less issues with it overall, um, but you can potentially do both. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna match, if you're not aware, it's gonna find um, a certain data point here, which will be our URL. And it's gonna find that on this next page. And then the first time it finds that, it would go through and it's going to return specific, specific information. Now we can run into issues though, if we have multiple Fava URLs, you know, if we have both a liability and a um, and an auto no fault, we want both of them to fill out. We don't want just one to go through and fill out. So we have a workaround for that. Uh, you might have to do an index and match if you wanna be able to pull a list, um, but that's not that's not something that I have been able to really get work into Fava and it usually does error out on me. Um, so, we're just going to go through and we'll pull this 3P insurance and I'm going to start with my X lookup. And for me, I build a lot of my reports just one at a time or what not reports, one of my formulas or my formulas one at a time and then continue to expand on them. And that way you're kind of following that logic as well too. So the value that I want to look up is going to be our file by URL. <clears throat> but I also want to look up, um, since this is going to be our third party insurance, I want to look up liability. So I'm going to put an ampersand right behind it. And I'll type in quotes liability. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that it matches up with this. So I do have it as just liability on there. Um, so I can add it. And then I want to look up, I want to find this file by URL. I want to find it in my helper insurance. Um, column A just by clicking the A. And since I'm using two different criteria in the criteria in this, I'm going to put and and I'm going to be searching for liability. So it's A2 is going to be searched for in AA, and then and liability is going to be found um, here in FF. So those are both of those. And if both if all that criteria is correct, then I want to be able to go through and pull in this right here. So it's gonna, it gives me NA right now, not available. I personally am not a fan of, uh, of not available, not applicable. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna type in if error. And at the very end of it, I'm gonna put um, just a comma and then do, and close it off. And then now if there's an error there, it will go through, it's not gonna show not applicable uh, or NA. You can also use this too within other reports. If let's say I'm going through and I'm doing something like that X look up there, or I'm trying to combine um, companion cases together because I want to get all that information together, I will go through and I'll maybe say, oh, there's no data that's appearing in file fine. If I know that if it's blank, it's going to be no data. So then my master one over here can say, oh, there's no data, please review. I do that a lot with SOLs as well. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's, we can't read the SOL, please review immediately because there is an error somewhere in there. Um, so it's essentially I did that for the third party liability. I'm gonna do the same thing with the adjuster. I'm gonna do X lookup. And I wanna go through and pull up my 
Bovine URL. That's gonna be my first one. And then actually, since we already went through and did uh, the third-party insurance, I could run it on the same way with liability, but I'm gonna just run it right here. I'm gonna pull that, that value that we already pulled over. Hit comma, and I wanna look up in on my helper page. A2 is gonna be that Filevine URL right there. And then I need to put and, and this is where I pull that other SID data set. Too, did it say too many now? Oh, that's right. I should do my return array. That would probably help. Uh, this is a jester, so I wanna just pull my jester information. Awesome. And I'm gonna go through and do the same sort of thing with our, you know, if there is an error, this is what I wanna, I don't wanna go through and see that. So put some of that handling in there, make it nice and pretty, cool. And lastly, I have my policy limits, which I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do essentially the same way as my adjuster. And I'm, I highlighted this, the text up here. I didn't just highlight the cell because uh, I want to go through and I want to paste it here. I want that formula to remain the same. Uh, if I were to just copy the cell over and do it right here for like there, it kind of goes through and, and messes with it. But I want the exact same formula. So I just copied the actual text. So here I have my, essentially we have file on URL, A and A. And then looking at H2, the same insurance, I want to find that in A and F. Let me double check that. No, I don't want A and F. I want All right, A and F. Uh, oh, yeah. See, I'm already confusing myself over here. I want D. So A and H and D and then return E for me. I want to return G instead. Cool. From here, I can probably just go through and just, well, I don't want to do it that way. I'll do it like this. Probably just copy all this information over. Because it's generally going to go through and be the same. Uh, there will be a slight adjustments, but it, it's faster than me going through and having to build it out. Oops. Build it out each time. So, We'll go through and we need to change liability. So I am going to look at, okay, we have it as UM slash UIM for a first party. All right. So then that should go through and pull an A, F, and D. And those are the same. So that should be correct because we're going to go through and have our adjuster information is going to be on there each time since this is going to be a collection. This is a collection section. Uh, so for every card entry, um, should only have just that one adjuster in this template that we're working off of. And looking at, oops, my adjuster. Let me put this information back in there because apparently it got pulled out. I want to do the same sort of thing. Looking at a. D and E, perfect. And then the policy limits. I'll do, let's see here. I don't want, I don't want 3P insurance. It's not really going to go through and work for me. So I want it to be, uh, let's see here. Ah, K2, because I want it to be for the first party insurance. All right, so that goes through, and those are quite a few formulas in there. They are basically all the same. Um, so I'm just going to go through, and I'm going to just make a couple adjustments overall uh, just to go and, you know, make it a little bit nicer, a little bit easier uh, for team members to go through and read, since overall I need some sort of product that's going to help everybody out. So we'll just go through, and we'll pick a, uh, a green as well, since we are... Vine scales. Awesome. And I also, I don't want this to appear within file by URL. I'm just going to hide it and mark that hidden. Oh, let me go through and update this too as well. Because I only want so many done. Oops. 
Maybe. All right, we'll just shift and hit arrow over and then pull my, my green again. All right, so now it's uh, we're good to go through and start tests. Let me hide this as well. I generally will keep that open for when I'm testing, uh, but for here, just to show y'all, I am gonna just hide it. Um, but you, I can see this is sheet one of two, so there is another helper sheet in there that's just being hidden for the time being. So let me go through and upload my new template and let's see if it gives us any errors. It definitely could. Oh no, that's not what I want. Where is the and now let me move it over to the correct location so we can pull it. Um, sorry, I'll thank you for your patience. Okay. Upload template. All right, so I'm have number four on there. I'm not worried about title right now. Um, and the reason being is that if you if I were to go through and upload this one again after it uploads the first time, it's going to go through and it's going to put uh, another set of parentheses and have um, the number one in there. And it's just going to keep going up. So I don't really care until I'm done. Um, that's what it matters. Because that'll pop up in your actual fusion in the file name. So let me go through and generate this and let's see if it generates. And I'll say too with fusions, I find myself doing a lot of testing. Uh, go through and test and then pull out the data and see what it looks like and adjust from there. There are times too where if I want to be able to figure out how to make the data work, I will run the report without any formatting so I get all of my projects and all of my sheets. If it if I don't have too much data, that is, um, I'll go through and I'll get that all pulled and then I'll play with it on that other sheet to make sure that it works. Because that is gonna be the key with it too, is that there are some things that you should be able to do in Excel um, that aren't gonna translate well for when the Excel is generated through Vilevine. Uh, things like array formulas where that's your result as an array um, are a list of things it's not gonna pull out the way that you, you need it to. Okay, so it looks like we have some errors here. So let's see what's going on. Also possible that it's just showing errors because the formulas and haven't all been able to, to run yet. All right, cool. So we do have some, inform or some things in here. Looks like for, let me unhide this. And this is our, um, Sandbox, we only have so much information in there, so I do apologize. Okay, let's see. See if I can, there we go. So I just need to hit my wrap text, or wrap text for everything. Looks like my, oh, see, and I messed up right there. I want C2. You can see how the date pulled in from an actual date, um, which is I have it on E3 right now. So on hide. You can see that this is what all the helper dates look like. And then this is what pulls out. So that doesn't really work for us. Uh, so I can go through and just apply that to all by dragging that corner down. And let me go through and while we're at it as well, pull my template up. And I can just make the adjustments as I go. So this one needs to be C, C2. Perfect. You can also hide this as well. Awesome. So again, cool. Our incident dates, I do know that not all of these have incident dates on there. Um, so I know that's why it is an issue. And we were able to go through and pull this other information in. So right here, Ivan is a good one uh, since Ivan's contact card is filled out. Uh, his name, phone number, and then his uh, his email address. Looks like I have an issue right over here. I messed something up, so I need to go through and fix that. Totally okay. It starts to I sometimes start to get lost as I'm going through and working on these. Um, so I can say that this one needs to be 
the H11 and K11. Perfect. And then this one here, I want the policy limits, which is my helper cell right here. I want to go through and make this. Um, actually, yeah, I want G. Helper and then G. G. Cool. So I've got my numbers in there now. And I can go through and I can update my formula for it. So that was M. I want to come here actually to the 1P adjuster first, because this should be K2. And then for the policy limits, update that to G. Awesome. So it kind of goes through, yep, and it's starting to pull the information over. Can do a lot of other things to my template too. You know, I can add my filters. So then you can go through and filter all of them, especially when you have all these filled out with, uh, with data. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, and you make this a little bit larger, I believe. And make sure I have my wrap text on for all of it, because I want it to all push down. Let me save that. OK, cool. So let's hide this as well. So I'll name, incident date, type, and then we'll have our third party insurance adjuster and policy limits. Um, and then also, if I wanted to, and generally what I would do, uh, we won't cover it today, is then I would start maybe adding medicals in there. Like if I want a list of doctors, I would go through and have a third sheet from that, and I would be able to say, okay, here are all the providers that the client went through and treated with, uh, or here are, here are all of the, uh, here are all the crimes that are being alleged. Uh, however, if it's a collection section, work you can work on it on the one page and then pull it over into your main one. Cool. So most of this looks right overall. Um, we'll go through and we'll generate that here in a second. I do want to add just a, a little bit little bit more information here. So I can just house um, information just in general. I want to go through and see what exactly, what types of incidents do I have? So I have my report here. I can just go through and I don't want to type all of it out um, since that would just be a waste of everybody's time and I don't want to do that to y'all. Uh, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to hit data, go to advanced. I'm going to copy this information to another location. My list range that I'm pulling from is G and then I'm going to copy to, it'll be the same page. And I just want my unique records only. Cool. Awesome. So I got all of those now. Looks like we have two different dog bites on there. I'm assuming we made a diff, uh, change to a drop down, so this will not need to go through and be fixed. Um, so I'll have to take care of that later on. All right, so let me go through, and I don't want to paste that yet. Let me add, and we'll just put all this an overview. And really, this is something that I do for a lot of reports. It helps just uh, you know looking at inventory, especially if you have multiple attorneys, multiple paralegals, you want to be able to go through and see, you know, how much work does each person have on their shoulders? Uh, this is a good way to do it. You can just go through, pull that information. You can type out, uh, you know, the different types, things like that. If I want to see different project types, if they're all in the same, or case types, if they're all in the same template, I can do this too. And this one's simple because I can go through and just make this into a table. We'll do the, uh, oh, it's a nasty orange. Let me just uh, copy and we'll do that. Cool. And then I'm just going to do a count. From here, I can do a count if, and then I can go through and find my range that I want to count in, uh, which will just be my static one. And then my criteria. And since I made it a, made it a table, super easy, because I can just click right there. Awesome, so that gives me counts. I can also go through and I can 
sort these how I want. If you don't do the table, you, have to be, you can't really do the sorting because it just mess everything up generally. Um, but so that's how I can go through and do it. And then I can actually, if I wanted to just apply this uh, to my actual template. So I'm still getting counts on it, which means that this is pulling from a different report. So watch out there. I'm just gonna update this and it's gonna be the same thing. Oops, to count if uh, my range, and then also my type. Cool. We can do a couple other things too, if I wanted to see, now this one probably won't be as much to help everyone, but you can use it a lot for, or you can use it for potentially limits, um, you know, just trying to go through and see, uh, Certain things on there, I mean, for me, I've, I've gone through and I've been able to, I'm, I remember making a list that had all these different projects in there. And I wanted to see the sum of the expenses, but only if the expense was, um, I believe it was a, uh, it was printing, something like that. Uh, and so I use the same sort of thing. Um, we'll do, we'll do a sum ifs formula. Oh, so if I want liability, total limits, I can do a sum if, and you can also do sum ifs, and that's it for multiple, multiple criteria. But here, I wanna go through and just back out of that. Let me actually open up a new, or open up my other tab so I can get my, my right information. And I wanna find all of them where our insurance type is liability, and I want to get the liability policy limits. So we can do a sum or a sum if and pull over to my helper insurance and pull my range. Uh, and I do use these a lot. It just helps me also just walk through it. So if you don't have these turned on, definitely turn them on. Um, and I want my first range to be here. I want to have it be liability. And then I want to be able to sum the policy limits right there. Perfect. Okay, so I don't think I added this name to anywhere. So I'm going to go through and just call it like, uh, oh no, a dash. Cool. And we'll just change this to a different color. So we all know that, hey, it's not together. Oh, I also want it to be a uh, currency. Awesome. So saving, and I generally just keep my same, I keep three sections up so I can do whatever I need to do. Sometimes reports as well, if I need to do some um, add extra fields or something to report that I've already generated. If you do do that, definitely come back here. If you've added a field, and I'm sure some of you have probably seen it, if you do have fusions, uh, it'll go through and say that this report is part of a, a report fusion. Saving this could potentially cause issues. Um, generally, if you go through and you're not removing any columns, but only adding, you should be fine because you're not taking anything away. Uh, cool. And you can see now that since I just uploaded the same document, it says 4.1. So we'll come back over to my admin project and we'll regenerate. Give that a quick second. Maybe because I'm impatient, just do a quick little refresh. All right, 1440, this is the one that we just did. I can download it. I'm not a huge fan of this update to Chrome. All right, so open it up and we have a couple, couple things. Looks like I did not make this wrap text how I needed to. So let's be something after my test, go through and try it again. I got my policy limits. I forgot to make these currency. So this one is the text box. So I'd actually I'd have to go through and um, adjust that on the other side. Um, let's wrap some more text. Oh, and did I not make those actual updates to this one? I might not have. 
Let's see here. Okay. Four, one. Ah, so the policy limits I did get wrong still. That should be a G. I forgot to save that part. That's okay. That'd be something I'd go through and fix again. That column's giving me issues, so I'm just gonna highlight it. And, ah, let's say this again and upload it again, actually, because I don't see, this is the one we just ran, I don't see my other sheets on there. So looks like there was an error, and I want to save that. Let me go through and close this one out too, so I don't confuse myself. And we'll try that again. Saved. Awesome. Let's see here. It's four, two, four, two. So I don't know why it's not wanting to say for me, M. Watch, I'm probably uploading just the wrong one in general. Sorry, y'all. Nope, not as a template. I must be. Call that V2. Put that in here. I think that's what it was, is I was just uploading the wrong one. Um, and I had a copy of this other one on the other side. So hopefully this doesn't take too, too long. Um, as this is going through, I'm about to oh, begin and end repeat. Main A2 is missing it. Let me double check that. I like right click and hide. Begin and end, end repeat note. Template instructions, main A2. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Bob on URL that has a begin. Oh, and I killed my end repeat note. Do and underscore repeat. Like that, and I'll give it a save and we'll try again. Um, while I'm getting this last part out, does anyone have any questions or anything that they uh, might be yeah, specific questions on anything? All right, so that was green. So come here, do a regeneration again. All right, I hope this is it. Okay. All right, there we go. So I was just uploading the wrong one. Sorry, I'll I generally work out of my downloads folder. Old habits start to die hard. Um, cool. So we have all of our information. We can go through and we can do some sorting too as well since we built in all of those filters in the first place. Um, but now, even though this is just the insurance section, we are able to go through now and have just one line for each project. So you don't have to have more than one line. Um, and I pulled like this. If you do potentially have multiple insurances but you if you know you have like three three p policies but you want to be able to go through and just track one i'd recommend having some sort of uh you know like a checkbox that says or like a yes no to have this in in to be able to report then we can filter by it too because x lookup is a little bit limited 
um, as well. And then I get my dashboard and we can see the total of all of our liability limits. The sum is from that other page is 175,000. And then these are the same numbers that we had as well. And you can go through and we can sort them and the counts will still stay the same. So I've done a lot with going through and adding reports like this together. Um, if you ever have maybe a couple of reports with the same criteria, uh, let's say that I ran a report with just liability insurances and I have another report that is just um, PIP. I can go through and I can copy this row. Well, that's fine. Generally, I can copy it uh, if it's just in that full, just normal setting that you have or normal uh, template. And then you can just copy and layer them on top of each other. I'll say a uh, couple other things as well. Let's see here. Oh, it's not going through and pulling it up, so never mind. Um, if you would, I was just going to see if I had an example of uh, a field from the helper page. Uh, it will show you that it won't work, but doesn't look like I have it. Uh, we were able to go through and get it done. Um, so yeah, I think that's, these are more complex than your general fusions, like the, the settlement statements that you can do. Um, a lot of those are just reports layered on top of each other. This one is really leveraging formulas within Excel to be able to go through and pull information over. Uh, I'll say good resources to kind of figure things out. Just here in general, if you're not so familiar with Excel, you can go through and you can use these information here. If you want to do something related to date and time, you can pull it up and then give you a helper on the side, which can be nice. Uh, also, you could potentially talk to, um, you know, ask AI. I know I've, I've had ChatGPT help me figure out just a, like one last part of logic before um, to make things go through and work. But this is how you would go through and generally do those. I think, I think that's about all that I have, Jasmine, unless anyone has any questions. Because I do like questions. No pressure. Um, I guess while we wait to see if anyone has questions. Oh, Jasmine, you're, I can't hear you. Is that me? Can you hear me now? Yep. You're perfect. While we wait to see if anyone has questions, I'll go ahead and drop my email as well as Derek's email here in the chat. That way, if you all have questions or want to retain Vine Skill services to do um, some more of these complex fusions for you, you can go ahead and reach out so that we can get you started with that. Um, I'm also going to put in the chat our free help page. Some of you may already be familiar. I see some familiar names um, here in, in our participants. But for those of you that maybe are not um, as familiar, we do free help every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and then we also just started a lead docket free help. That's once a month. Um, you can get all of that info on our website there. You can also navigate to our pricing pages to kind of see what our services um, cost if, again, you or your firm are looking to engage in VineSkill services. Not only do we do launches, but we do optimization services as well. So for folks that have been in FileVine that are looking to really um, take full advantage of all of the great things that FileVine <laughs> offer or even just, again, fusions, doc gens, um, anything like that. We do uh, do those services. We do lead docket, FEDA. We kind of run the gamut, um, demands AI. So any questions you have Filevine related or getting those, again, optimization or launch services, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, it was a pleasure. Uh, it doesn't look like any questions have come through. But again, if you think of any, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you would like to talk to someone today, if you could send us an email, we can get you connected. So that way we can ask a few more questions as far as like, if you've already been in FileVine, how many users? That way we can match yeah. you with an optimizer for um, your firm. Yeah, because we're each, we each have different skill sets overall. Um, and we really, we want to make sure that if you go through and you do start working with us, that you're set up with the correct person so that we can give you the best service um, that we can offer. Of course, 
if you will need anything again, feel free to reach out. If not, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you, Derek, for an amazing session. I always learn something from you. Um, so appreciate it so much. And hopefully yeah. we'll see you next week. Have a good awesome. one. All right, bye bye. Bye all.